Welcome back. In the last video, we figured out how to get the interior pixels for an object in the custom depth buffer. And by interior pixels, I mean all pixels that are on a mesh in the custom depth buffer minus the background. And that's because the background has surrounding pixels that are white or have high custom depth values. And we essentially have summed up all the values of the custom depth of each pixel surrounding the given pixel and we summed those up and we subtracted a large value from those resulting in a negative value for pixels on a mesh and a positive value for pixels off of the mesh. We used ceiling so that any values that are not whole numbers get rounded up to the next whole number and then we clamped to zero and one meaning that negative values become zero and positive values become one. So zero is a pixel on a mesh and one is a background pixel. So in other words, all pixels are either black or white. And the black ones are of course on the mesh, but not the border. So actually here in the comment, this is not quite right. A one is actually the background plus the border. So this results in a white image with only black where there's an object in the custom depth buffer. So since we have the interior pixels, we'd also like to have all the pixels on a mesh, including the border. And we can get that by using our scene texture custom depth node. So if we right click and type scene texture and get a scene texture node, and for our scene texture ID, we select custom depth, then we can take this color and we can mask it so use component mask, uncheck the G so it's just masking the R, and we can subtract that large number from it. So let's subtract, and we'll create a constant value and give it a value of one and seven zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's 10 million. And the result of this subtraction, we're gonna go ahead and use a seal on it to round it up to a whole number, and then we'll simply clamp this one between zero and one. Now this gives us the custom depth value. This will be a very high number for pixels that are not on the mesh, and a very low number for pixels that are on the mesh. So when we subtract 10 million, then we'll get a negative value for pixels on the mesh, and a positive value for pixels not on the mesh, we round that up to a whole number and clamp it. So now we have zero for pixels on the mesh and one for pixel is not on the mesh. Now we can use something called a one minus node. And a one minus node is exactly what it sounds like. It takes one and subtracts whatever you plug in. So let's plug in our result here. And one minus will invert this because we're plugging in something that's gonna be either zero or one. Now, if it's a zero, then the result of the one minus node is gonna be one minus that zero that we're plugging in. In other words, it'll be one. And if the value we pass in is one, well, one minus will subtract one from one and return zero. So the one minus node will take our value that's either a zero or one and invert it. If a zero goes in, a one comes out. And if a one goes in, a zero comes out. So zero means pixel is not on a mesh. And one means pixel is on a mesh. So essentially we have two sets of information. We have white on the background plus the borders of objects. And then we have white on the objects themselves. Now, if we multiply these two together, what do we get? Well, if it's on the background or the border of an object, this top value will be one. But if it's on the object here, it'll be one as well, and one times one is simply one. Now, this top value is zero if we're on an interior pixel, and the bottom value is one if we're on an interior pixel, and zero times one is zero. So since this top value is zero for pixels on the interior of a mesh, not on the border, then Wherever there's a zero, we're gonna get a black pixel. And then down here, 
we get a zero if the pixel's not on the mesh. So we're gonna have black everywhere outside of the mesh. But the only thing that these two have in common that are both one is the border. You see, this is white on the background plus the border. And this is white on the border plus the interior. So multiplying these two together gives black for everything except for the border. Let's take a look at this. Plug this into emissive color and go ahead and hit apply. Now, if we go back to the default map, we'll see that we get the border of the object. So we're now one step closer to getting our border effect. We now have a post-process volume that has the border information for objects in the custom depth buffer. In the next video, we'll learn how to add this information to the scene color info so that we can actually see an outline effect. See you then.